Hi, welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with Drew from Riot Games. Hi, Drew. Welcome Hello. to the show. Thanks for having me. So what do you guys do? Uh, we're the game company behind League of Legends, Legends of Runeterra, Valorant, and a few other upcoming titles. Wonderful. Um, so we are here to talk about Hono over IP. AP. Yes, yes, it's a mouthful. What is that? <laughs> so it is a new data ingest system for League of Legends. Interesting. So it sits on AWS. Um, so let's talk about the details. I'm, I'm really interested. I'm sure our viewers are interested to understand what's behind this. Um, so you have players, I see player icon. Mm -hmm. So how do they interact with the back end? So they interact in a couple different ways. So players are connecting to our game servers and data centers around the world. Um, the game client is also talking to an API that's running in EKS. I see. So you have an API in EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, talk about the so number of players. Uh, you know, how many are we talking about here in terms of scale? Uh, millions around the world in 20 plus shards. Okay. And then how are they interacting with the back end? Are they sending information? What, what are you, what are you, in what ways are they interacting with yeah, the EKS so the, cluster? So uh, the game client and game server are both sending information about that player experience. Like um, how are their games going? What here champions are they playing? Okay. Um, what kind of uh, things in the store or are they engaging with? Okay. So you're collecting that information ongoing. And can you give us a scale of like how much information are you gathering in a given day? Um, so we are uh, pulling about eight terabytes of data a day. The system peaks at about, you know, somewhere over 500,000 events per second. Oh, wow. And what's the geographic reach? I mean, is this, I, I suspect it's global. Yeah, global, worldwide, okay. um, all, all over the world. Uh, like I said, 20 different shards or something like 20 that. 20 different shards. So, you know, with that global presence, I'm sure, and the you know the amount of data that you are gathering, how do you deal with that level of flow and uh, to make sure performance is uh, uh, sufficient? So well, it's challenging. There's 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 challenges with network connectivity and throughput. Mm -hmm. um, these are all data centers that are hooked up through our Riot Direct network up into kind of the nearest AWS region, but that okay. network can become congested at times. Okay. So what do you do then? You know, once you uh, connect into EKS, what's the next thing that happens? So data flows from EKS into MSK here. And okay. um, this is kind of our, we have a regional buffer where there's five different regions where data flows in, data is collected, uh, and it's prepared for processing. Okay, so managed streaming for Kafka. And then, uh, you know, how do you deal with that level of data flow? Uh, can you talk about the d dynamics? Like, how is that working? Well, so MSK just kind of takes care of a lot of that for us. Great. Which is, uh, Kafka is a very robust streaming data platform. And, um, you know, we're able to scale up and out, like, as we need to. We've kind of settled on a nice scaling pattern that's that's served us well. That makes perfect sense. And then what about the gaming servers? Uh, do you have any level of connectivity into the back end as well? We do. So okay. the data is buffered here locally. And um, then we use Mirror Maker to replicate data out of a local Kafka cluster here into those regional MSK clusters. Okay, so Mirror Maker, obviously a component of, of Kafka. And why do you do that? Uh, well, it's like, like I mentioned earlier, network connectivity can be a challenge. So um, when we hit peak players, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a huge difference from when we're in off time, from what just kind of network is available. And that, that player experience is the most important thing. So I don't want to be uh, degrading their ping by, you know, trying to send a bunch of data back to our systems. I see. So you have a local copy. I mean, you're buffering data here, mm -hmm. essentially using a mirror maker to, to replicate it out. Replicate all that to MSK. Uh, interesting. So now, what happens next? So once everything lands in MSK, we have a uh, Spark job, Spark streaming job, which mm -hmm. is writing the data out into uh, Delta Lake in S3. Okay. And then, uh, okay, so you then, that's your data data store, uh, data lake. What do you do with that data? Uh, so that serves everybody from, um, uh, so we have our data consumers at that point. So mm -hmm. everybody from analysts, designers, uh, engineers, executives are running their queries against that data, ETLs run against that data, and that's like kind of provides insight into what's happening in the okay. game. Okay, so what's that user, what would that give to the user? What's the user experience? So when you have this set of information, what do I get as a player, say for example? Um, so like something like, uh, say we roll out a new patch mm -hmm. and we've made some changes to, to, to champions. It's it's like kind of critical to see what effect did that have on gameplay? Are, are, are players see. winning more with that champion now? Has the length of games changed? Are the towers falling earlier? So um, 
this system moved kind of the, the time to get that information out somewhere between like six and 24 hours down to five minutes. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's pretty impressive. And then on the consumer side, I do see glue. So yes. Can you talk about the consumer side? Yeah. So uh, we have Databricks running. Um, glue is our meta store. So glue is um, kind of the information about what logical tables are there, where are those files in S3. Um, and it acts as our permission and access layer between our users who are acquiring the data and kind of the raw stuff out of Okay, this. so do you have you know, consumers here using the glue to then uh, access at least to, to view and see mm -hmm. and search mm -hmm. for the data. So Drew, thanks for walking us through this architecture. This is a really great example of a hybrid architecture, right? Using Kafka to buffer information on-prem and then being able to, to move them into the backend AWS uh, using managed streaming for Kafka, as well as providing uh, enrichment and access to analysts and others to, to view the data and also better for the user experience altogether. So thanks for being here on the show. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture.